Originally released for the Neo Geo MVS in 1992, ADK's entry into the 101 beam up world of the Neo Geo had to have something that would set it apart from the many other fighters on the system. ADK went for the interesting approach of using only two attack buttons, one for kick and one for punch. Depending on how long you held the button would determine whether your character would throw out a light or heavy attack. This seems quite awkward but in reality it actually worked. Not happy with just a new attack system, ADK also threw in the deathmatch mode. In this mode you would play in enclosed rings surrounded by hazardous obstacles that were just waiting for your opponent to be thrown against. At first glance, the Neo CD version looks to be identical to the arcade and Neo Geo home console releases. But if you look closer, you'll notice that there are differences. For example, on Hanzo's stage, the marketplace on the left and right sides are mirror images of each other, while on the arcade and home Neo Geo releases, they are different. These background changes are there to save on memory space, as the Neo CD is limited compared to its cartridge based brothers. Then there's the CD audio. Some may think it's a vast improvement over the original, while others will hate it. Personally, I think some of the tracks are really good, but then again, I also like the original chip tunes. Sega Midwest Development Division were the division of Sega responsible for NHL All-Star Hockey 95 on the Mega Drive, as well as two unreleased Sega 32X games, known as Aftershock and 
Black or Dark Angel. So as you can see, this Illinois based division of Sega America didn't really produce anything of value, which is probably why they were shut down in January 1995. Their port of World Heroes is awful. You can clearly hear how bad it sounds and see that it looks rough around the edges, but what you can't tell is just how bad it plays. The CPU AI is unbelievably cheap. In fact, this feels nothing like World Heroes. Collision detection is bad, the timing of moves is way off, and the game suffers from inconsistent speeds. A truly awful attempt that started off promising with a nice presentation. Developed by Sunsoft with audio composed by a tone-deaf musician, it would seem at times, this Super Famicom port is actually pretty good. True, the character sprites are much smaller than the Neo Geo original, and it's missing the arcade style title screen, but overall, this is a pretty good port. What's also interesting is that the special moves are much easier to pull out in this version than all the other ports, including the original. Sunsoft have also given players the option to set light and heavy attacks to different buttons. Funnily, this became the norm from World Heroes 2. Maybe ADK decided Sunsoft's idea was better. Let's 
and let's take a look at all four versions of World Heroes running side by side. 